Hey, this is Joe with Personas. Do you use mix effects in your mixes? If your answer is, I'm not sure, I don't know what that is, then listen up, because this is one of the coolest features in Studio One, and I feel like nobody knows about it, and I want that to change. So here's a mix session in Studio One. Looks all normal. There's a bunch of channels, a bunch of faders. No big deal. On the right-hand side here is my main output, my mix bus, and you can see I have a couple of plugins here. All is normal. But just at the top of this mix bus, you'll see this. It says mix effects. What is that? If I click on it, you can see a list of plugins here. And while they are technically plugins, this is completely different from any other plugin in Studio One. Uh, the one that comes with Studio One is called Console Shaper. If you're a Studio One Plus member, then you've got access to all of these here. So just so you know, you can have the, you can install those for free. They're part and they're included with your membership. Um, but I'm going to go with Console Shaper because it's the one that's on most systems. Okay, so when I open it, we can see okay we've got Console Shaper here, and we can see that we've pulled up a plugin. What's this? Is it just another plugin on my mix bus? If so, you're thinking Joe, you've lost it. No, this is not a mix bus plugin. This is mix effects, which is completely different. So you know how there are lots of plugins out there that you can buy that you can put the plugin on every channel in your mix and it will make it sound like you're going through these different vintage consoles, right? So maybe one that's got lots of transformers in it or one that's tube based or any number of these things. You've seen them probably uh, online. They're cool. Right, because you take a digital system, which innately is pretty um, transparent, and you're adding in all the different kind of funky, cool things that happen when you run audio through a bunch of iron, right, through a console, it imparts a certain character to it. Even if you're not using the EQs and compressors on the console, just running signal through it does something, right? And so if you want some of that or you want to experience that, mix effects, we have that built in. You don't have to buy another plugin to do that. You can do it here with mix effects. So this plugin here, yes, it's a single plug-in window and I'm adjusting drive, noise, and crosstalk, but it's not affecting only the mix bus, it's affecting every channel in the mix. So if this pass-through is enabled here, this button, that means all the individual channels are now being affected by this. We're determining how hard are we driving each channel in the mix. How much noise are we allowing, right? Inherent, like listen, just now. If we were in a old studio with an ancient console and we just just sitting here talking, there would be that a level of noise just coming through the system. Uh, some people say they love the sound of the noise. I tend to turn it off just because I, I don't know. Maybe it does a cool thing. I just I'm not quite sure. So I leave it off. And then there's crosstalk. Crosstalk is like the magic of this in an old analog console. One channel is next to another channel. And sometimes there's crosstalk a little bit of the kick drum bleeds into the snare drum or a little bit of this guitar bleeds into the other track and that crosstalk too much of that is obviously weird um and probably back in the day of creating consoles you wanted to minimize crosstalk but now we realize some of that crosstalk creates this kind of a cool mojo in the mixes so we have that available here as well so i'm just going to hit play and listen to what happens as I turn these on and as I adjust them up and down. It's more on the subtle end of things. So if you're listening on your telephone speaker, who says telephone anymore? Uh, you're not going to hear much. But if you're listening on headphones or in your studio, you'll hear it a little bit better. Uh, but I'm going to just play for a minute and let you hear what it's doing. So that drive setting, just turning it up to six is where I usually leave it. It fills out the low end and it, ta it tames the high end a little bit. We're adjusting basically how hard we're driving the preamps across that console. Now, if we crank it up, here's what happens. You'll notice a bunch of the tracks disappeared. What happened? Well, we're cranking up the inputs into this console, which means those compressors are getting hit harder by what we cranked into it. So it's messing up that gain structure. Um, but 
it's very true to how it would work in real life. Typically, I would use this at the very beginning of a mix process before I have any compressors in there, adjust this and find the setting that I like, and then mix with this just kind of humming along in the background. Uh, the noise thing I already showed you, here's what Crosstalk does. I'll let you see. You can see the meters change as I turn up the Crosstalk as we listen. I mean, it kind of messes with the balance, of course, uh, but it does a thing, right? Like some of the reverbs are bleeding into other reverbs, right? The, the delay is bleeding into the reverb, which is right next to it. It's just a fascinating thing. So I tend to like to have this up a little bit. It adds a little bit of volume overall, which makes it a little tricky to hear um, or to see if it's doing anything, but I just like what it does. Now, th th so this, just to refresh, this is applying across everything in your session. Whether you've got 10 tracks or 100 tracks, you're now adding this not on the mix bus, but literally on each individual channel. I think that's the piece that people don't realize. I don't have to put this on every channel, it's just there. And for those who are asking, yeah, I could put a different console on my drum bus if I wanted to, separate from everything else. I tend to not do that because that's just too much to keep wrap my head around. Uh, by the way, if you've been thinking about joining Studio One, Plus, you actually hear some of the different desks that we have here. This Alpine desk is ridiculous. Um, I used it on this mix. Um, you've got the same controls I already showed you, but you also have this transformer where you're kind of cranking up how much iron you get in the sound. Uh, what else do we have? The, the uh, Brit console is delightful. It's got several modes, vintage, super, and modern, and then you've got the ability to add more second or third order harmonics. There's just more and more stuff as you get into these kind of more fancier versions. CTC-1 is one of my favorites as well. It just adds this kind of whoo to the mix um, without having to do anything with EQ or anything else. And then Porta Cassette is fun just because you can make it sound like you ran it through like your old cassette recorder. So that one can be fun uh, for effect, but I, I don't use it across my entire mix. Uh, so there you go. That is Mix Effects. If you have not used it, this is a Studio One professional feature. So if you're an artist, you don't have Mix Effects, that's a great reason to upgrade and check it out. And you get all the different Mix Effects when you join Studio One Plus. So lots to think about. If you already have Studio One and you haven't played with these, this needs to be what you do tonight. Go check it out. It's super fun and will give you a whole new flavor for your mixes. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.